Good afternoon, everyone. This is Lisa of Lady Huzzah Presents on FlossTube and Lady Huzzah on Instagram. I do apologize. It has been a while since I have filmed, but I was really quite down with a stomach bug a few weeks ago, a week or two ago, and that would not have been pretty. Anyway, I'm back and I have a lot to share with you today. So let's get started. I'm ready to stitch into spring. So anyway, um, one of my, just to do some old business here, I had a giveaway that no one has claimed for the last two um, videos. So I am going to um, offer to someone else. I have chosen a name from the comments from that video and it is for my Christmas sewing set. And the winner is Carol Jensen 4910. So Carol, if you see this, please email me and I will get this beautiful chart sent out to you and you have plenty of time to get it stitched for next Christmas. Um, so anyway, hopefully you'll see this and you will find my email in the show notes. Okay, a little bit of a life update. I hope everyone had a great St. Patrick's Day. We sure did. We have um, friends that have a band and they do um, cover music, but then they also have some Irish inspired music also and some other original songs that they do. And we went to see them at a local brewery here in um, Williamsburg um, and they just brought down the house. They were terrific. The name of their band is The Connection and you can find them on Facebook. Um, really super fun, really know how to get a crowd going and it was a really enjoyable time on Saturday night. The other thing we did about a week ago, um, a week and a half ago, is we went to Richmond to see my son's band play. My son has a day job in New York, but he also is in a band which has been a lifelong dream of his. And the name of his band is Slow Fiction. And they were going on tour. They played in um, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Texas. In fact, right now they are driving back to New York, the whole band, all five of them, had a big van and with all of their equipment and um, really were away for two weeks touring. And today, I pray for their safety, they are on their way back to New York. Uh, we were very honored to see them in Richmond, as I mentioned, and then that night, the whole band came back to our house and slept over. It was a very late night because of course, we had some food for them here when they got back. And then of course there was breakfast in the morning for everyone and they kind of had a relaxing day to regroup a little bit, get some laundry done, just hang out. And then they headed on to North Carolina from our house. So that was really fun. Um, like I said, the band's name is Slow Fiction and they are on streaming services. Um, I know Spotify for one, and they're about to come out with a EP. So they're really doing quite well as a new band. Um, and um, it'll be fun to see how they progress over time. So anyway, on to other things here. Um, I have had a lot of stitchy kindness. Um, the first one I would like to mention is some bags that I was sent from Nana Kay. Her name is Karen, but her grandkids call her Nana Kay. And I mentioned these bags on my last floss tube that when I was at Stitch Away, she so very generously gave one of her little itty bitty bags to every participant of Stitch Away. So Karen has sent me some bags for, my, for me to keep and also some to share with you. How generous is that? It's just super generous and her bags are absolutely beautiful. This is her information, but don't stress, I will also have it in my show notes. Um, Karen can be reached on Instagram, um, and uh, let's see, I don't have that right here, but you can find her if you look up, I will, I will make sure I have it on my show notes. I am so sorry, Karen. 
Um, actually, I think I have it here with something. So anyway, she sent me this project bag. So lovely. It is beautiful sewing, French seams on the inside. She puts a little strap here that you can hang your fob with your scissors so you don't misplace anything. Um, beautiful, beautiful workmanship. Just check this one out. This is the front fabric with the bees. Here's her logo on the back. So that's one of her project bags. Then she also sent me one of these sets of bags. Look how nice this is on the inside. They are so nicely lined. Such beautiful, beautiful workmanship. A little tab here if you want to clip anything onto it. She included a key ring, a key strap, a smaller bag. All makes a beautiful, beautiful set. So I do have one of these to offer to you and also a project bag to offer to you. So this is the mini bag, the itty bitty bag, she calls it. Look how little that is. It fits right in my palm that she sent me to share with you. And I will give keywords for my giveaway later on in my floss tube. And then she also so generously gave me this set. And this has a key strap and two bags. Look how beautiful this is. Here, you can see the fabric better from the back. Look how beautiful this is. Karen is an amazing sewer. Now, she can be found at um, the Steel City Stitching Retreat in April, in case any of you are going there. And she will also be at StitchCon with her bag. Her bags will be at StitchCon. So, so generous. And here is another bag that she gave me to give away. This is one I'll be giving away also. Beautiful, beautiful project bag. I just love, I just love this fabric. Karen, you are amazing and I just cannot get over your generosity to share these with us. So for my giveaway this time, I will have this bag, this set of bags, and then this itty bitty bag. Look how, look how cute these are. They are just spectacular. And Karen did tell me that she is coming up with other things that she would will sew and have available to all of us. She's debating whether she wants to start a Facebook page or an Etsy shop or just how she wants to get her pieces out there. But um, they're absolutely beautiful. And I will, like I said, supply the contact information um, for you to um to purchase her bags she did say that if you have a fabric that you would like to have her make bags from um you can work that out with her and just send her the fabric and then she will make you the bags for them and you can just work that out with karen directly i'm not going to get involved with that but anyway they are so beautiful and i am so happy to share them with you so anyway that is a huge piece of stitchy kindness I have. The other stitchy kindness I have, I will share right now. I have a friend who was at um, Nashville and she went to help Sarah from Salty Yarns in Maryland. And my friend Stacy brought me back this beautiful selection of finishing ribbons that she said she got at Needlework Press. And I am so excited to do some finishing with these. They are just beautiful, beautiful ribbons and a wonderful selection. I see something with Halloween on this orange one, I'm sure. And they are just absolutely beautiful. So thank you so much, Stacy, for thinking of me when you were in Nashville. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, my next bit of stitchy kindness is this. I got a lovely package in the mail from my friend Marcella, Marcella Mayfield in California. And she actually was apologizing when she sent this to me that it was late for Christmas. Well, if somebody makes me something this beautiful, there are no apologies needed. I know that to make things from your heart, it takes time. So I am a truly happy recipient. 
This is a little box container. I was using it to put projects in it while I'm working on them and it buttons together here so it can completely fold down flat if you choose. But Marcella is a masterful sewer and I was really, really thrilled to receive this from her. Hey, gifts are gifts and they come from the heart no matter when you get them. And I was so thrilled and so happy to get this. So thank you so much, Marcella. That was very, very sweet of you. I really, really appreciate it. The other bit of stitchy kindness I got was also from another friend in California, Jen Kieran. Um, at Christmas time, Jen sent me a lot these she sent me this large box and the smaller box inside of here from a company called Maple and Lark. Well, it is a really nice firm box, lovely zipper on the outside. And it's really great to see um, what projects or things you have in them. You could use them really for anything, not just stitching, but you know us stitchers, we try to find a purpose for almost any kind of container to use for our stitching. So anyway, I told Jen how much I was enjoying using the box that she sent me at Christmas time, and I was looking to purchase some more. Well, I got on the Maple and Lark website and they were sold out of these boxes. So I sent them an email. There was a portion to indicate if you wanted to be notified when they restocked. And I got an email back from them saying they only restock once a year. Once a year, really? So I told Jen, I said, you know, I can't wait to get a hold of some of those Maple and Lark boxes, but they said they only restock once a year. So she sent me a surprise gift in the mail. She sent me all three of these and she said, nobody should have to wait a year for something that they really want. So I was so touched that Jen thought of me and thought to go to the effort of sending me these boxes clear across the country. So thank you very much, Jen. And now that I've showed it on my floss tube, I can fill it up with some stitching goodness. So thank you very much. I also have some other um, stitchy kindness. Oops, I'm, now I'm dropping stuff over here. And here's my notes. I have to make notes or I will just be a blathering fool. Anyway, my friend Robin Lockhoff, who owns the company Old Willow Stitchery, sent me one each of her market releases. Well, Robin completely blew it out of the park. I've known Robin for many, many years. She was in my sampler guild years ago when I used to live in Ohio, and I've gotten to know her better through different stitching events and what have you. And um, Robin used to teach um, then she started reproducing samplers and she does a beautiful, beautiful job with them. So I will show you some of these samplers, um, sampler charts that she sent me and you will just have to go to your needle workshop and request them if they, you know, go buy them at your needle workshop or look for them online or have your needle workshop order them for you. They are amazing. This one is Louisa High. 1862 and she has an adorable um, verse on here. I wrote it down so I can show and talk at the same time. It says, Dear parents, I am young and cannot show such work as I unto you goodness owe. Be pleased to simple upon myself my first endeavor. I'll strive to mend and be obedient ever. Isn't that precious? I don't know about you, but my kids would never say that to me. <laughs> I think they just wing it. Um, but, but anyway, this is a beautiful sampler that she reproduced. And on the back, she has a picture of the original. So, so nice. This is beautiful. There's a, a ship on here and some, it looks like strawberry vines trees, all of the sampler goodness that we love. 
So thank you, Robin. Well, it goes on. She has um, more of them here. This one here is, I'm not sure whether they this was her name, Lucia Funston, or whether it was supposed to be Louisa and the girl spelled her name wrong on her sampler, but she was age 12 when she did this sampler. Again, another beautiful sampler. And on the back, Robin shows the original. It has a wonderful parrot on the front and of course, different baskets of flowers and trees and the alphabets. And Robin's charts are done in full color and very, very legible, beautiful, beautiful. I just can't wait to start, start these. Okay. Now this one, this one I think will be my first one that I do. I just love this one. This was Isabella White, 1830. It's a Scottish sampler. Um, what I love about this is all the red and green up top, but then that big blue brick house. I love it. I love it. And this one is spiral bound. And um, here's the original. So Robin did an amazing job with this. And like I said, it is all in color. And um, this sampler, I would probably stitch this on 36 count, and it comes out to seven, 10 and 7 eighths by 13 and 5 eighths high. So it's a really beautiful sized piece without being overwhelming. I just, I just love this. This is, I think, my favorite of all of them, but it's really hard to um, determine what my favorite is. Okay, then she sent me this one, which this one is also very unique. This is Margaret Elias, or Elias, and it's from 1880. Check out the patchwork house with its complimentary patchwork trees. This little girl had fun with this sampler because I can't imagine her house really looking like that or the trees looking like that. But look how precious this is. I just love this. Margaret Elias or Ilias. So cute. All right, and then lastly, um, Robin sent me Margaret Lunt from 1834. And this is a very just traditional Scottish sampler. It has the red and green on it, and it has the baskets. And this one is just darling. This picture, I might be wrong, but I believe that this is the original. So again, Robin does a beautiful job with her charting. Her charts are very clear to read. There's nicely marked for the overlap as you go from page to page. And she's really done a stunning job with these. So keep on the lookout. If you are a sampler stitcher, go check out the samplers from Old Willow Stitchery. Robin Lockoff. And you know what? She is just as beautiful, a be just as beautiful person as she is her sampler reproductions. So I was very, I was very thankful to receive her sampler charts in the mail. She's really going places with her designs. Well, she's been designing for quite a while, but she just keeps putting out better and better and better reproductions. So thank you so much, Robin. Okay, let me see the, let's see. So that pretty much covers my stitchy kindness and boy, that's been a lot of it, don't you think? Um, so what have I been stitching? Well, I have been working on my WIPCO projects this year, and I've never done WIPCO before, and this is my first time, and it's really been fun. I've really enjoyed it. It has been a really nice travel down my stitching path to pick up some of these whips that have just languished for whatever reason. I don't really know. I mean, who knows? You know, people say we're like squirrels. We just hop from nut to nut and tree to tree and just changing our mind about where we're going and what we're doing. And that's exactly what 
stitchers are like, you know, we're stitching on something so diligently and then something catches our attention and whoop, we're off to do something else. So anyway, my um, WIPGO projects for February, I think I showed you my January ones the last time. I believe I did. Anyway, my WIPGO projects for January or February was um, my hats sampler, Matilda. And this was from the um, red box that Nicola put out for her birthday two years ago. Um, the red letters box. So anyway, this Matilda, I am stitching on, my apologies, I have not ironed anything. It was hard enough for me to get my act together to even film today. I am stitching this on 36 count Brea from Needles and Flax. And I am using Classic Color Works, Cherry Cobbler, and Wavy Navy. Now, I didn't come up with these colors on my own. I saw that Shelly Fry from Antique Needleworkers was stitching hers on this, and I just thought it was beautiful and had to jump on it. Now, it may not look like I have a whole ton done for meeting my goal for February, but ladies, I, ladies and gentlemen, I definitely have. I had just a small amount stitched on this previously, and um, I have really made a lot of progress. I do like to get my border aligned so that I can just fill in and I know that my border is in the right place and everything has matched up. So now since I have started every line, it's kind of easy to just hop in there and stitch. Yeah, my WIPGO board, if you go back to my WIPGO video, I had so little done on so many of the things, it was really kind of ridiculous. So the other WIPGO for February was my Mary Cox um, Petite Regal sewing set. This was a project from the Orange Coast Sampler Guild um, a couple years ago, and there was a little bag that you made to put it in. Now, there was a little ribbon tie that went on here, but instead I just put a little piece of Velcro. Now, this was a fully finished for me, which I was super excited about because I had next to nothing stitched on it. So here we go. I will show you the whole thing and then show you all the pieces and parts. Here's a Petite Regal sewing box. So here's a little pin keep. And this has my initials and the year. And this is all beautifully finished with um, silk ribbon and then ultra suede on the back that came as part of the kit. I did attach two mother of pearl buttons on the side um, as my own interpretation of the finishing and these little mother of pearl buttons were from the club that Jackie DuPlessis had um, a few years ago to to order she sent out a little bag of different mother of pearl buttons every month so here's a little pin cushion that goes in it here's a little scissor keep so this L and R is Lisa and Robert my husband's name wed for 34 years this year and then on the back are my children's initials Aaron Duffin and Ryan Duffin easy finishing on this um, and it came with the scissors and again I placed a little mother of pearl button there on the little decoration on the scissors I will say that it does help to read directions because I was very happily stitching this and didn't realize that to finish this, these little cuffs were made from folding it over. So partway through the stitching, I was supposed to flip, flip it over and stitch from the other side so that when I made these cuffs, all the stitching was properly done. So I had some frogging to do, which is totally annoying, but um, hey, I got it done and in the month of February and I was so thrilled about that. So then here is the little box band.
And this says on the inside, Lisa L. Duff and her work, 2024. It has a beautiful alphabet. And then it says, Duffin established 1990. And that's the year that um, my husband and I got married. So everybody knows my little, um, how I love little dollies and everything and to have them near me when I stitch. So I had this little porcelain doll that since this was the Petite Regal sewing set, I dressed her in some vintage lace, little bow on her back, and I placed a crown on her head. And it all fits tucked inside this little box. So I was super thrilled to get this finished. And as I said, I had very little started on it. Um, when, when my number was called for Ripco, I think I had a little bit of the over one stitching and a little bit of the non stitching on the band. And that was it. But once I got going on this, I really engaged me. And not only did I meet my whip go goal of 10 hours on it, but I finished it completely. So I was totally thrilled. Okay. My whip go for March. All right. One, I'm still trying to meet the goal. The other, I have met the goal. One was um, Scarlet Letter, Peacock, Unicorn, and Badger. And I know a lot of you have been doing that. Some of you have stitched it on a dark fabric, a dark green fabric, so you don't have all that fill in. But I didn't necessarily do that. I bought the kit from Scarlet Letter about two years ago and stitched some, but not too much. And um, I made a lot of progress on it this month. And again, it is not ironed. But before February, I had across the whole top done to meet the sun. Again, I really like getting my borders in place. Um, I had this done here and some of these, I had the outline of the peacock, but I have gone to do some more fill in and now I've stitched in the outline of the unicorn and I am totally into this right now. I've been, I keep finding myself being drawn back to this. Um, because it's so much fun. What I try to do is fill in some of the little objects and then have an area that I just have to fill in with the green. So if I'm watching TV, I can do that and just have to fill in the green. It's kind of like coloring, but look at mine stitched with the Verisua silks and look at all these beautiful colors. This is just such a fun piece to do. And I am a definite proponent of waxing my threads. So I do wax this silk and it makes it hold up against fraying much better. And I just draw my thread across the wax, the beeswax, and not a big glob of it. I just pull my thread through. Oh, I don't have it. I don't have it handy here. But anyway, I just draw my thread across it, then go again with my finger and pull off any excess that it might have picked up along the way. But this has been really a lot of fun. Now, when I first started this, my friend Miriam sent me a sampling of memories. I think it's from sampling of memories, little thread holder that has the peacock unicorn and badger um, completed on it on the tag such a nice way to hold my threads. And it was a very, very thoughtful gift from my friend as I was on bark, embarking on such a huge sampler. But I tell you, this is a lot of fun. And whether you're stitching it totally, total coverage, or whether you're stitching it on a green fabric, it's just a really, really fun stitch. So that's my Peacock Unicorn and Badger. And I did meet my WIPCO goal of 10 hours, oh, way more than 10 hours this month um, to meet my WIPCO goal. Now, the other piece for WIPCO for me for March, okay, this is going to look like a big yawn, but it's really not, is the Button Lover's Brag Book from Sherry Jones. Now... Well, you know how things just get put aside. I took this class, I think back in 2012, and I had so little completed on it. 
it still looks like I have little completed on it. I had about five inches of the blue border done, and that's long arm cross stitch. And this will be the outside cover and back, the front and back of the book. Okay, well, since this had been put away for so long, I really had to study the chart, study the directions, and get my bearings on how to get going again on this. So that took a, quite a bit of time. There was also, I based it out this whole size of this so that things matched up correctly. Um, so this was a long arm cross border on this whole thing. And Sherry has a beautiful way that she uses for the hand finishing of this. And then there's inside pieces of this in brown and this is stem stitch. So I will spend the second half of March working on this. So hopefully next time I'll have a lot more to show you on my progress um, with this, with the button book. It is really beautiful. I don't know if any of you have done it, but you can see the pages of it hold samplings of different buttons. There's a place for pearl buttons, glass buttons, fashion buttons, metal buttons, um, and it's really a treasure. And then there's some button cards here that included in the kit is this fabric that's printed with that on it. And it's really a treasure. It is a stunner when it is finished. So I'm just hoping that um, I can put more time into this. So this is my how I'm spending the rest of my March for the most part, because I also have some other things going on. So also what I did for Mar for February was the Colorado Cross Stitcher um, cross stitch camp and her prompt for um, February the cross stitch camp for February was to do something with an animal in it so I did the hands-on design and it's for narwhal and this was a PDF download from Kathy Haberman um, this raised money for the Special Olympics these are finished on oh I forget who makes these boards mm. I'm sorry, I forget who makes these boards. But anyway, they're finished on these boards. You can buy them as a set. Um, the linen is from um, mm, Fabrics by Stephanie called Polar Plunge. It's a 32 count linen. It's a blue that is absolutely perfect for these. And I did achieve my goal of my N is for Narwhal. So, there's other ones in this series. I could not put my hands on all of them right now, but there's a whale called Whale Hello There. I love how Kathy comes up with the names for things. She has a wonderful humor about her. Here's Polar Bear Peak, and here's a little polar bear peeking up from under the ice. There's Wally the Walrus. Puffin Party, so cute. And Penguin Pear, so cute. So I wanna do all of these. I have gotten the boards. Let me see, oh, I forget who makes the boards. I do apologize, I'm very sorry about that. Um, but they also suggest, they also tell you what scrapbook paper to get. This is scrapbook paper in the back. Um, which I have that, that was from Hobby Lobby. And then the trim is um, Lady Dot Rick Rack. But anyway, super fun. I can't wait to finish all of them, but I have a lot going on right now, so I don't know when I'm gonna get back to those. Who knows, maybe there'll be a whip go on next year, but I really hope to get to them sooner because they were really fun to stitch. And honestly, it really worked up pretty quickly. Okay, so, the other thing that I worked on uh, in, um, have been working on since I visited with you all last was my woolly tree. I think on my last video, I showed the kit for the tree from Attic Heirlooms. Well, I got going on that and it has been so much fun. I signed up, there's an Attic Heirlooms Facebook page and an Attic Heirlooms um, website and then once you 
you can ask to join a private page, which is Stitch Along with Attic Heirlooms or Attic Heirlooms Stitch Along. Anyway, each year, Trish Harriman generously um, puts out free patterns, a free pattern for each month. And you can just print out the pattern for that month. Otherwise, if you've missed it, you can buy the pattern for her from her, or better yet, you can purchase the whole kit. Now, she has been doing this for years with a monthly freebie. I have gotten some in the past. Some I have made, some I have just collected. But this year, this one just struck a nerve with me. I just love it. It's for a woolly tree. And then each month, there are ornaments that go on it or tree accessories. So I am totally caught up. I've done January, February, and March so far. I can't wait to get my hands on the April one because they've been so much fun to do and really fairly easy. So anyway, I showed you the kit the last time for the tree. Now here the tree is. In the kit, you get the base. You get everything to make the tree, the fabric. So I will show you what I have done here for my kits for the over the month. So the tree we I ordered in December, I did not start on it until January or maybe beginning of February. But anyway, so the January ornament was this one. Oh, stop spinning there. And also this sweet little package to make. And her directions are fantastic. The only thing I did with my package is that I weighted it, I stuffed it and weighted it with lizard litter a little bit to give it just a little bit of weight to it. Um, so these will be sitting around. She did say we're going to get more packages. Um, so these are Lazy Daisy stitches with French knots on the wall, all hand sewn together so you don't have to be a sewing machine sewer. And here again is the January ornament that came with that. So then for February, we had, let me get these, oops. For February, it was two ornaments and these are the ornaments. It looks like little orange slice. Again, super cute. These probably measure inch and a half, inch and three quarters across. Really fun and her directions, like I can't express enough how great her directions are and makes it so doable and so easy, even if you haven't done wool work before. And she's very generous with the supplies. When I made my tree, I had really enough wool left over that I could do another tree. So, and then the March one, the March kit was to make this garland. Well, how sweet is that? My garland, when it was completed, I kept going until I used up all the beads because there's three beads separating each coil. And um, my garland came out to be just under three yards. On the directions, she said that hers was about two and a half yards. And then again, I had extra coils left over. So maybe I'll you know, come up with something else to make with the rest of the coils to make the garland, but so much fun. I cannot express how much fun it is. So go over to the Facebook page, Attic Heirlooms. And Trish has told me that she's out, she's on vacation right now and she's out of the trees right now, but she is making more trees, gathering more supplies, maybe getting the base. The base came with it too, which is, awesome. Um, so, but she will have more trees available. And I did tell her that I will be mentioning this on my floss tube and you know how that goes. You see it on floss tube. And sometimes I know myself, I am taking notes and right on it and ordering on my phone as I'm watching floss tube, but be patient. She did say she will have some more. Okay. So some other things that I've been working on, um, where I thought I'd find the time for this, I don't know, with working on my whip goes, but I did. I started the Cupid Sampler from Whip by Needle and Thread. Did not finish it, but I don't stitch 
for the holiday. I stitch with the holiday. So this was actually a Valentine's project I was working on at Valentine's Day. This is how far I got. Of course, I like to do my borders first. Just kind of sets everything up. So I'm kind of anxious to see how that little cupid will work up. And again, I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count Brea from Needle and Flax. And I'm using one strand of Lancaster Red Weeks Dye Works for it. So that's that. The other project that I mentioned to you all the last time that I thought that I would get to, but I did not other than just harvesting my supplies was this, which was a download from Sub Rosa for Be My Valentine. So she actually has it stitched up with, um, uh, let's see here, Sage. I changed out some of the colors. She had it stitched with Weeks Dye Works Cayenne, Sage, and Molasses. So that would have been the sagey color. Let me see if I have it. I don't, but I changed the colors. I'm using cayenne, pine needles, and black to do it. But that's as far as I've gotten. I have not done anything other than just making my supply harvest. So now it's ready to go when I'm ready to go. And I really think I'm gonna pick this up soon because it's really, a nice project and I've seen a number of people have stitched it on different Facebook groups and I love it. I totally love it. So that's that. The other project I have also started, you know, I feel like I haven't really had a whole lot of stitching time, but talking to all of you, I'm seeing that I have had plenty of stitching time. I'll tell you that weekend I was sick really did me in and what made me more upset than being sick is that I wasn't stitching at all for a number of days. Anyway, I did start a leap year project. A leap year project was a project that you start on the last day of February, and then you have four years to complete it. So I wanted to do something big and glorious. So what I pulled out, I've been wanting to start this anyway. What I have pulled out is this big girl from Heartstring Samplery. I don't normally stitch on scroll bars unless it's something huge like this. And I am stitching His Eyes on the Sparrow, which I absolutely love, have loved it for years. And I figured Leap Year gave me a great chance to start it because I don't have the pressure of, or self-imposed pressure of getting it finished um, because I have four years. So I have like another three years and 10 months before I start to feel the pressure. Anyway, check out all of these colors. These I'm doing it with all the over dyes. Such beautiful colors. And I am stitching this big girl on 28 count mushroom Lugana over one. Here's a picture. Now let me take out. I had the PDF for this. Beautiful. I just love it. And I'm stitching it on 28 count mushroom Lugana over one. And even over one, it is still sizable. It's 16 by 13 over one in its finished in its finished size. So anyway, that's that's his eyes on the sparrow. Oh, wait a second. I want to back up a little bit. I wanted to show you the pictures from Attic Heirlooms of the woolly tree. I just saw these laying here and I forgot to show them. So this was the first month for the tree. This was January. And February. And then this was the garland for March. So again, can't wait to see what April brings for that. Okay, okay. So let's see here what else we have. All right. So haul. Since this is aftermarket, everybody seems to have a lot of haul. Well, I am no exception. 
I have haul and I will go ahead and show it to you. Some of the haul is from Nashville. Some of it is not part in the reach here, but I need to, I need longer arms or a bigger pile close by. So anyway, first off, I will show you something that was not a Nashville haul. This was a total wonderful snag from a resale site on Facebook. And this was a collection of Daldani um, number 12 pearl cottons. And look at this cute Whitman sampler box that they sent it in. I have never seen this chocolate box before. So anyway, I purchased all of these Valdani threads. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's 30 balls of Valdani in there. And then I got this one with another six. And then they, there was a seventh. So I was able to snag all of these for a wonderful price. I think this was $38. They're all new balls of thread. And then I think this was another, another $6 maybe. I forget. But anyway, I was so excited to receive these. They just came in the mail this afternoon before I started um, sharing my time with you. So I'm really excited to have these. And I just love the way that... Valdani um, looks when you're doing wool applique and wool applique is so relaxing and so um, a real pleasure, a real pleasure to use. All right, so that's that. Okay, this is some of my other haul. I've joined the Scattered Seed um, Samplers Pincushion Club on um, Etsy and I received my first one in the mail. Now, Tammy Black does a beautiful, beautiful job with these kits. Check this out. Look how nicely that comes. Is that perfect or what? So here's the backing fabric for the pin, pin keep. And then there's directions to make this tiny little berry down there. And then, of course, you get your linen and your threads. And it's just in a really cute little nest charm. So check that out on Etsy. That's Scattered Seed Samplers, Tammy Black. Then I also purchased, now this is not my market haul yet. This is just haul haul. I purchased on, um, from another group I belong to, they were talking about doing the Hands Across the Sea sampler for, um, you know, I'm, so, I'm sorry about the crinkling. I, I do enjoy the crinkling though. It's just anticipation. It's just anticipation of what's to come. So doing the M Minquin sampler. This has some darned areas on the bottom, some darning work, which I did some years ago and haven't done it since. And I'm excited to get into that again. And for this, I also ordered the um, conversion to Vicki Clayton threads for this. Now her silks are fabulous to work with. And these are the colors. So I'm excited to get started on this. Again, I've got all my WIPCO going on too. Hopefully the numbers for um, April will be projects that I have more than five inches stitched on. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe not. Um, but anyway, so that's my hats piece. Then I also purchased from Hobby House the last of their, the last of their kits that will go well, that will then go with a big sampler that they have. There was a spool, there was a drum, and then that, now this mattress pin cushion. Oh, here all, all pieces are pictured here on the back. So this is available from Hobby House now. Um, you order your linen separately from the chart so that you can choose the linen that you desire to stitch on. It doesn't come with um, just a pre-cut piece of linen. 
Uh, I have um, Thornfield, um, 40 count Thornfield. And I really love this piece that I got. It is modeled, but not totally blotched up. So that's another project in my inbox. And that's Mary Alcorn, 1764 from Hobby House Needleworks in Pittsburgh, New York. Now they are moving into a new fabulous shop. Um, not that the other shop wasn't fabulous, it was, but they had Hobby House Needleworks, they had Hobby House Woolworks, and they wanted to have Hobby House Quiltworks. So now they moved out of where they were in a cute little shopping center, which that was pretty darling, but they moved into a bigger, huge barn type building that they'll house all three shops under one roof. So that will certainly be a wonderful opportunity to stitch there. Okay, so more of my market haul. This, I just love this. This is Yuri C. Fell, 1856. This is from Red Barn Samplers, Ray Niles. She is a delight. Um, Ray and I finally met after knowing each other for many years through social media and exchanges that we were on. And it was like meeting up with my long lost sister when I saw Ray at Stitch Away back in January. Anyway, I love this sampler. The border is cherries. Here, I'll show you. And I don't believe I've ever seen a sampler with a cherry border before. So I just love everything about this sampler. So thank you, Ray. And I can't wait to get started on this one either. The other thing I got, which I think most people did too, was the Prairie Schooler Santa for 2024. I have all of these from when they first started, so I could not miss a year. But I love the tree background on this, how the tree backstitch background is on this Santa. So that's another piece of market haul. Um, the other thing I got were the two Blackbird design books that came out. That I love more strong. And this has, these are the projects in here. And Moments of Glad Grace. I just love the very poignant titles that Alma comes up with for her pieces as well. So this is kind of a sampling of what's in this book. Okay, but wait, there's more. I also got from Primrose Cottage their collection of 12 monthly minis. These are little pin cushions. And you know, honestly, I did not realize how many they really are. It says stitched on 36 count. They only come out to be two and a quarter by two and a quarter. 36 is really my sweet spot. I do stitch on 40 count also. I will stitch on 32 count, but I really love stitching on 36 count linen. I unfortunately have some cataracts that are not ready for, um, for getting them removed yet. So it is difficult for me to see sometimes on the tighter counts, um, even with magnification and lighting, but that's okay. I find plenty of stitching to do and I'm perfectly comfortable stitching on the 36 and 40, but these are absolutely adorable. It's a little tiny mini pin cushion for each month of the year. And what a great gift this would be for some of our stitching friends. Just a little thank you or a little holiday surprise. Um, but I really can't wait to dive into some of those. Okay, so I do have another thing. This is from My Sister's Samplers. And Beth and Rebecca of My Sister's Samplers, they're friends of mine. Um, and they started designing and doing reproduction samplers. Um, I think they're just doing reproductions right now, but um, this was adorable. And again, now I just said I stitch on 36 or 40. However, this kit I found irresistible. I will show you. And it is stitched on, here it is. It's a little sampler, a miniature sampler. And they did this as a kit. I don't know if it'll always be a kit, 
because they also sell the chart by itself. But this is stitched on 46 count. However, I will try it again. And if I have a hard time, I'll just switch it to 40 count. But look how cute this kit is and all the contents. So here's the linen that it came with. All cute with its little red and white checked ribbon. There's a little very thin needle for using the silks. There is a little honeycomb waxer. There is a darling um, needle minder. And the needle minder reflects what the sampler piece is that you're stitching. And then there's these really cute thread winders, wooden thread winders, and the um, um, green is Gloriana Floss, and the red is a Tudor Silk Bellagio. So cute, I can't wait to <clears throat> get going on this. So wait, there's more haul. I also bought a pair of scissors. These are dinky dye scissors. <coughs> and shamrock dinky dye scissors. These, I don't know if you saw it, they have strawberries. And I bought these specifically for, I have a kit from way back when from um, Lauren Sauer and she, it's for a strawberry basket and then you make little strawberry um, accessories to go in it. So I did buy these specifically for that. And then my sweet friend, Susan, the owner of Liberty Hill Needleworks gave me this little fob, gifted me this fob to go with it which I have to mention about Liberty Hill Needleworks. I am so thrilled to have a needlework shop right in my town now. And what is funny is sometimes I go in there and someone will say, I think I know you. And then they'll say, are you Lady Huzzah? And it, it brings such joy to my heart that people recognize me and will introduce themselves because it's so nice to meet a new stitcher. And I'm really having fun meeting stitchers when I'm um, at, at Liberty Hill. So that's been great. So please, if you see me out and about, please introduce yourself because I love to chit chat with you and get to know you because all of my viewers know a lot more about me than I know about you. So it's really fun to make a new friend from my point of view also. So I really, really appreciate that. So anyway, I do have some more market haul that has not come yet. And that is some of the um, little animals that um, Stacy Nash designed. And there's one that is a little bunny that is so cute. I got the little bunny, I got the squirrel, I got the mouse. Now I cannot wait to stitch that bunny and have her standing near this little vintage wagon that I found one time in an antique shop. I just love this little wagon. I put different things in it as I decorate. I have a table in my front hall that I decorate for the different months. Like at Chris in the winter or when it was like January, I had this filled with white wool balls for snowballs. I will put little strawberries in it. I will put a big old tomato pin cushion in it in the summertime. Um, I put some of the strawberries from Erica Michaels in it. And it's just super fun to decorate this little, this little wagon with. Isn't that the cutest? So I can't wait to make that animal crackers bunny and have her standing near this wagon. So anyway, that's for things to come in the future. Um, I do have one more thing I have finished. I've made this for a friend. Um, I don't want to say who it is right yet because they obviously haven't received it. I finished knitting this this morning and I do just need to finish the ends off and block it. But this is a cowl that I adapted from another pattern for a Guernsey shawl. Um, I did buy the pattern for the Guernsey shawl at Salty Yarns in Maryland, Berlin, Maryland. And not only have I knit the shawl, 
but I have adapted this cowl and have probably knit, oh, a dozen of these. If any of you remember last year before I went to Ireland, I knit one of these for my daughter, her friend, the people we were visiting, and one for myself and my husband. I have since knit these for my friend Miriam and Sylvia also um, as gifts, but, um, and another friend, Debbie. So I've knit a lot of these and it's super fun. And now I have knit another one for a special friend that I have to mail out to her. So anyway, folks, that's pretty much what I have for today. Okay, so just to review my giveaway with you, now you have to like and subscribe and comment using one of the keywords. Okay, so please don't mention, um, oh, I don't know what I did with that little bitty bag. Please don't mention giveaway, raffle, anything like that, because then you get creepers, um, trolls out there trying to earn a, you know, get a prize that they were not intended, was not intended for them. So anyway, if you would like to win this sweet little bag, it's a like little botanical print, your um, keyword in your comment would be itty bitty. If you would like to win this lovely set of two bags from Nana Kay with the little key fob, um, your keyword in your comment would be set. And if you would like to win this project bag, beautiful, beautiful. I had a hard time deciding which one that I wanted to keep. Um, but anyway, if you would like to win this one, have the word project in your comments. So anyway, that is what I have for you today. I have a huge pile of stitchy goodness surrounding me now and hopefully it'll not be so long until I see you again it really brings joy to my heart to hear the to see the comments that you have I did I have read them all I have not responded to all of them since the last time it was a little bit of a touch and go month in many ways um but anyway I will get to them and I'll get to the comments that you have now I so appreciate your subscribing. If you're new to me, please hit subscribe and click on the bell. Then you will know when I have other videos coming your way. Um, so if you're new to me, I hope you stay. And if you are returning to me, I really, really appreciate it. So friends, until the next time we get together, may you find calm, joy, and relaxation in your stitches. Love you. Bye-bye.